the FBI is looking into the pardons that Matt Bevin, the former Kentucky governor has granted. And he granted these pardons right before his governorship was up. As we all know, he lost his reelection bid. And what we know is that a state representative has disclosed that the FBI has reached out to him. And here's what he has to say. State Representative Chris Harris told reporters that a criminal investigator contacted him last week and asked what he knew about Bevin's pardons. Now, I want to be clear about something for, for those who maybe haven't followed this story from the beginning. Matt Bevin didn't pardon nonviolent offenders, maybe people who were caught with possession of marijuana. Now, in that case, those pardons would be completely fine. That's something that we're very supportive of because nonviolent individuals who had possession of drugs do not belong behind bars. What he did do was pardon convicted felons who were convicted of violent crimes, things like homicide and rape. Let me give you more. Harris did not elaborate on what questions were asked by this investigator. And he declined to say which law enforcement agency contacted him. But here's what he did say, I can confirm that I have been contacted by someone looking into the pardons that were issued by Governor Bevin on his way out the door. The impression I got is there was an investigation ramping up. It may be a formal investigation or it may not be a formal investigation, Harris told the Courier Journal. It may be just calling to see if there's anything there to warrant a full investigation. I can tell you at least there are questions being asked. Now, two sources with knowledge of the inquiry told the Courier Journal on Monday that an FBI agent had spoken with Harris. An FBI spokeswoman declined to comment saying the agency could neither confirm nor deny the existence of of said investigation when reached late Monday night. So just to go back and give you specific examples of the type of people Bevin pardoned, the Courier Journal reported that Patrick Baker's brother held a campaign. Patrick Baker was one of the people that was pardoned. He was convicted of homicide. His brother actually held a campaign fundraiser at his home for Bevin in July of 2018 that raised $21,500. The former governor also received a letter from business executive Terry Forch, who one of the state's Republican mega donors urging Bevin to pardon Baker. Okay, guys, so we talked about this on Friday, but that's a really important development about Forched. Uh, so that information was not available to us at that time. And so now the Courier Journal in Kentucky is reporting that uh, there's actually over 650 people that he has pardoned or commuted the sentence of. And one of my theories on Friday was that part of the reason he pardoned so many people is to hide the donors that he pardoned in the middle. And so some of the pardons are so heinous as we're gonna get to in a second that it kind of distracts you from P, uh, from the Baker pardon. Uh, and Baker is uh, a guy who committed uh, murder uh, and tampered with evidence, uh, impersonated a police officer and did a robbery. And this is not a pardon of a guy from, oh, but he did it back in 87 or something. No, he did it in 2017, two years ago. And so his family's very well connected, gives what I call legalized bribes to Bevan. Now, the media oftentimes says, no, those are not bribes. In fact, every time they say, no, those are legitimate campaign contributions. Well, when the, these guys give him $21,500 and then they say, hey, wouldn't it be great if our uh, brother was out of prison? And then all of a sudden his brother comes out of prison, what the hell do you call that? That is a bribe. And by the way, it's a bribe when these guys do it. It's also a bribe when ExxonMobil does it, when Pfizer does it, when any company does it, it's obviously a bribe. But Forged is a super important development because he has given at least $2.8 million to state and national political causes over the last 40 years, including more than $100,000 to Bevin's campaign and, in, and inauguration funds. So it's not just the 21,000, it's Forged who is a mega donor, when a mega donor calls you and he's bribed the party to the tune of $2.8 million, you're gonna do what he says. It doesn't matter how heinous, doesn't matter how awful. You will do as you're told. These politicians are not leaders, they're followers. They're water boys, they're errand boys for the rich and for multinational corporations. Yep. So when Forge says jump, Bevin says, how, how high? And how many killers do you need me to pardon? Because I'm here to serve you. And that's that's exactly what happened here. Yeah, that's exactly right. And and as I mentioned earlier, you know, some of the convictions were for 
rapists, uh, child rapists. And recently, uh, Bevin was asked to explain his reasons for pardoning people like that. And he's gonna explain why in the clip that we're about to show you. But I, look, before we go to it, I have to say um, it was disturbing for me to listen to. So I wanna give you a fair warning um, before we go to it. Uh, and the guy is uh, Miko Shodel, and he raped a nine year old girl. Okay, and now you'll see Bevin calls a speculative or whatever. You'll see the exact words he used in a second. Remember, he was convicted. It's not at all speculative. He was convicted. Now let's listen to Bevin talk about it. A child rapist, though, that is the lowest form of human Absolute life. Absolute scum of the earth. You know, for people who have raped children, anybody who volitionally assaults another person, and any kind of a sexual assault in particular, and especially on a child, to me is reprehensible. How but did to, how to, to, uh, to assume, however, that everybody who has ever been accused of this and even convicted of this has, in fact, done this uh, is a big assumption to make. It really is. There was this was the second one. This is a guy named Micah Scotley or Sco I don't even know how to pronounce his last name. So Let me tell part. you about this fellow. He was accused of, of sexually assaulting repeatedly. For over the course of almost two years, well over a year, every single Wednesday, I believe it was, repeatedly sexually assaulting her and her sister, this girl claimed. She said that every week he came in and sexually assaulted me and my sister. Well, the sister who was in the same room every time, every denied all of it. These girls both were examined medically. They were examined physically. There was zero evidence Zero. Both their hymens were intact. This is perhaps more specific than people would want. But trust me, if you have been repeatedly sexually violated as a small child by an adult, there are going to be repercussions of that physically and medically. There was zero evidence of that. Jesus Christ. Okay. Other than being monstrous, he's of course wrong, as we pointed out on Friday. Uh, only 2.1% of subjects examined had visible, visible lesions on the hymen in a survey of pediatric child abuse rape cases. So 98% of the time, the hymen is intact. Uh, and this guy's like, what, what? Her hymen was intact, it's fine. And after the guy was already convicted, the first case he was talking about was a 15 year old that was raped so brutally uh, that the child had internal injuries. And they took pictures of it and put it on social media. And he did the pardon anyway. Jeez. So I don't know if he's some sort of sadist. He's and disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, oh God, lowest of the low, scum of the earth, really, right? Where where that money for your campaigns was way more important than actual human lives, and hundreds and hundreds of pardons, right? Because he believes that these were well, this is the excuse he's giving that they were wrongful convictions. If he genuinely thought that, wouldn't wouldn't that you know, light a fire under him? Wouldn't he want to do something about the justice system if it's that wrong that often? Yeah, well, uh, so I don't know that he picked those cases because he's a particularly brutal and sadist uh, guy, or maybe it's and, but or to kind of distract people from the one he got bribed on. Well, oh my God, everybody's talking about the nine year old and the 15 year old, and maybe not talking enough about the guy who, whose family did the fundraising for him. Now look, I love that the FBI might be investigating this, but if we're being honest, what are they investigating? In this country, it's legal to bribe politicians. It's called campaign contributions. There's not a goddamn thing you could do about it. The Supreme Court says that that murderer's family was just talking to Bevin. And when Forch gave $2.8 million to the Republicans and $100,000 to Bevin, he was just using his freedom of speech to talk to Bevin. That's what the Supreme Court says. Mitch McConnell from the state of Kentucky, same state, is the biggest defender of that. He says, no, 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 when multinational corporations and rich donors give us millions of dollars, they're just talking to us. And they have a right to talk to us. So it is legal in this country to bribe politicians that way. I know it seems shocking, but it's absolutely true. So I don't know what the, in the world they would be investigating. So the problem isn't that it's illegal, the problem is that it's legal. So that's why I tell you guys about Wolfpack all the time, wolf-pack.com. Because if you don't get the money out of politics, what the hell are we doing? I know other groups that care about money in politics and they, they mean well, but they say things like, well, we're gonna take action when there's a big scandal. <laughs> the whole thing's a scandal. And now can you get a bigger scandal than this? 
to let murderers and child rapists go because of campaign contributions? And what are we doing about it? What are we doing about it? What is the Republican Party doing? They're celebrating it. Right. They're celebrating this bribery. No as ifs or buts. If you're a media person and you say that the Republicans don't celebrate these legalized bribes, you're a liar. You're an absolute liar. Mitch McConnell and the Republican Party love this system where you could give campaign unlimited campaign contributions to politicians through super PACs, fundraisers, wine caves, etc. Which leads me to the Democrats. Unfortunately, 80% of the Democratic Party also loves this system, also celebrates it. So spare me their fake outrage on this issue. For real Americans, by the way, 93% of us, including Republican voters, hate this system. They know that it's corruption. But the ban marches on and pretends that Bevin is an outlier. It's some sort of unusual case. No, it's the same exact thing as everyone else, except instead of getting bribes to help the oil companies destroy the planet, as an example, or the, from insurance companies to destroy our healthcare system, where, by the way, because of private insurance, 45,000 people a year die. 45,000 people a year. But those bribes are no, just campaign contributions, right? In this case, it happens to be murderers and rapists, but it's a bribe any way you slice it. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.